five to eleven servings of bread cereal or rice. Three to five of vegetables and four of fruits is best. Their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. What we're going to do in this video is, is talk about a non-infectious disease, more specifically about the occurrence, symptoms, cause or risk factors, and treatment and management of one specific type of non-infectious disease. The one we're going to cover in this video is heart disease, and more specifically, arteriosclerosis. Now, the reason why I say more specifically this type of heart disease is because heart disease refers to any part of the heart itself not working properly, and arteriosclerosis is one example of when the heart doesn't function properly. But there are other examples, but the one we're covering is arteriosclerosis. Now, I obviously have problems saying that word. It's a very complicated word to say, but it sounds something like arteriosclerosis arteriosclerosis. Um, but yeah, what it is, is actually a stiffening of the blood vessels. So it's stiffening of the blood vessels. And the lumen, this is lumen, the inside of the blood vessels becomes more and more narrow. Stiffening of the, of the blood vessels, more specifically, of not only the blood vessels, but of the arteries. So arteriosclerosis attacks the arteries. What happens is there's a cholesterol, a fatty deposits, they're called cholesterol or fatty deposits, a buildup of fatty deposits, which will eventually, right, so this is before, this is initially normal here, this, this part normal, and you can see there's a progression over time, this becomes more and more narrow. So you've got fat deposits here, and these fat deposits will eventually basically make it so narrow that there can be very little blood flow passing through the actual blood, in this case the arteries. And what that means, it's obviously going to have quite a few problems when there's no blood, flu, blood flow flowing through the arteries. And this is more another example of your arteries, this is your artery, and you can see these fatty deposits, which are taking away lumen, so lumen was this part, which means over time that gap, where blood can flow through, has become more and more narrow. Now, if, for example, let's say we have our, this is our artery here. This is our artery. And these are obviously our capillaries because the capillaries are the ones which directly feed our cells. So we've got our cells here. And what do cells need? Amongst other things, they need oxygen. So where does oxygen come from? Oxygen comes from the arteries. So arteries go away from the blood, uh, away from the heart. And then they go to the capillaries. And then oxygen would usually go into our cells. And the cells would be fine. They would get their oxygen, which they need. Right? But the problem is when we have more and more of these fat deposits, which I'm now coloring yellow, then there's less and less space, which means we're going to have restricted blood flow, which means over time we're going to have less and less oxygen arriving in our cells, which means these cells can't function properly. They will actually start dying. Now, Usually you start to suffer a lot more if you have a clot. A clot is if a piece from somewhere above here flows down, a clot will, will basically be like a rock that jams in there. So that's, that would be a clot. So after a while, it's very narrow. If a clot happens, that would usually not be a huge problem but because it's very narrow. That means there's a complete blockage. So now we can, nothing can pass through, which means anything on this side on the side that, that needs to have the actual oxygen would die because it's not going to get any oxygen anymore. Now, we have different types of arteriosclerosis, ones which affect the heart. Uh, so this, is, this here is an a, a artery of the heart, which I'm drawing here right now. And if there's a block in the heart muscle that supplies the heart with oxygen, that means the heart is going to die because the heart, the pumping part, won't get any oxygen, which means it will die. If you have a blockage in, for example, the legs or the arms, that means anything which is below that blocked area will die off. And what I mean by that is, I'm going to show you a picture, it's a quite disturbing picture. But this is someone who also had arteriosclerosis. But in this case, he didn't have it at the heart, but he had it somewhere here, which means any part to, to the right of it would get no oxygen. And what that would mean is you would have a death of the cells, and you can see the death of the cells by all that blackness. That means they have gotten oxygen, they have actually died. Now, this is a extreme form of arthrosclerosis. Most people who have that, it's a quite common occurrence, most people who have arthrosclerosis do not get 
this, they don't get a dying hand, they'll actually get a heart attack, right? Because it often occurs in the actual heart, so at the heart, which means if the heart tissue dies, that means you also die from heart attack, or at least you won't die, but you might get a heart attack, and that could potentially cause you to die. This is where heart, what heart dysclosis is, it's a form of heart disease, and this is what we're going to talk about in this video. But what we have to specifically talk about is the occurrence symptoms, the cause or the risk factors, and the treatment and management of heart disease. Because the actual dot point says to choose, um, identify data sources, plan and perform first investigation, or gather information from secondary sources to analyze and present information about the occurrence, symptoms, cause, treatment management of a named infectious disease. That's what we have to talk about in this video. And I've already written here, current symptoms, cause, risk factors, and treatment management. Occurrence just means sort of how often or how many people have the disease. Is it you know, an, a, a likely killer? Is it um, how many people have it in Australia and other parts of the country? That's what's meant by occurrence. Symptoms is what you feel when you have the disease, the actual symptoms. Cause or risk factor. In this case, it's what will give you heart disease. So the blocking is not the cause of the risk factors. It's stuff like a too much animal fat, et cetera, et cetera. That's our risk factors. This will give us arthrosclerosis. And we'll talk about treatment and management, which to do is when we already have, if we have heart disease already or arthrosclerosis, what can we do to treat it? So that's what we have to talk about. And I'm also going to quickly talk about prevention as well. Prevention refers to if we don't want to have it in the first place. So if we want to make sure we don't get it, what can we do? So I'll cover it bit by bit. All right, so talking about the first one first, occurrence. Just a couple of quick facts. It's the number one cause of death in Australia. So cancer is the second highest cause of death in Australia, but heart disease is the number one cause of death in Australia. And that actually includes arthrosclerosis, but also a couple of other ones, so not just arthrosclerosis, but arthrosclerosis is the most common type of heart disease. And there's 47,000 deaths that have occurred in 2004. So every year there's about 40 plus thousand deaths. And that means that's about 36% of all deaths are due to heart disease or arthrosclerosis. So it's number one killer in Australia and it's number one killer in many parts. In many of the developed countries, it's the number one killer and in quite increasingly many more developing countries as well. But in most developed countries, it's actually the number one killer. Australia it happens to kill 36, so be, be responsible for 36% of all deaths. So that's the occurrence part. And the symptoms, so this is what you feel once you have the disease. And if arthrosclerosis, if it actually starts to get more and more narrow, if it starts to get more and more narrow, you won't actually feel it until there's, it, it's quite narrow. So if it's really narrow, that's when you're going to start feeling it. So you, it actually takes a long time for you to build up. You actually start accumulating fat when you're quite young. So from about 10 years old, you're going to start having this problem that starts occurring. But then it's going to be a small, tiny deposit. And over time, it's going to build up more and more and more. So usually by the time you're 50, 60, 70, 80, that's when you're going to suffer the symptoms of heart disease, even though you might have had a tiny bit of buildup ready beforehand. The symptoms usually come kind of the couple of months before you suffer a heart attack, for example, not necessarily when you start building up your fatty deposits in your arteries. And the symptoms are breathlessness, fatigue, pain, especially chest pain. For If it's, if it's a artery in your heart that's blocked, you're going to have chest pain. If it's a artery in, for example, your leg that's blocked, you're going to have leg pain. So the pain is usually there where the actual artery is being blocked. And you're also going to have some swelling. Now the fatigue makes sense because if we have a lack of oxygen, because of a lack of blood supply to our tissues, to our cells, that lack of oxygen means we produce less ATP, which means we can do less stuff. We can do less activity, everything else, before we get tired, which is why one of the symptoms is fatigue. And pain makes also makes sense because if we have a lack of oxygen, that means you're going to have things, cells starting to die, and that will give you a pain response. So pain comes from that, from actually things basically suffering because they are deprived of oxygen. 
So these are the symptoms. These are the things you feel when you have arthrosclerosis. But remember, it's usually at the end stage. So kind of before you have that serious um, heart attack happening, which can actually be a symptom as well. Heart attack is actually also a symptom of arthrosclerosis. But just before you have your heart attack, you're going to have these other things come into play as well. Now, uh, you cause your risk factors. I mean, these are these are the things which give you arthrosclerosis. Right? So these are the things which cause a buildup of fat in your arteries. Now, having a high saturated fat intake, and saturated fat is considered to be the bad fat, and that's the reason why they're considered to be the bad fat. So if, for example, you were to eat uh, olive oil, olive oil is also made up of fat, but they have poly and monounsaturated fats that are good fats. Whereas if you were to, for example, eat lots of animal fats, so you, you have high fat milk or you butter, that's mostly saturated fats. That's mostly your bad fats. And the problem with these bad fats is that they're the ones that cause a plaque buildup. This is called plaque. The fatty deposits we call it plaque. They cause a plaque buildup. And that plaque buildup will obviously eventually kill you. So that's one of the things that causes arthrosclerosis is high saturated fat intake. Another one is smoking. So smoking is a lifestyle factor. We can we can smoke or we can't smoke. But smoking itself causes this block build up as well. So it causes block build up. Lack of exercise contributes to arthrosclerosis, and so does age. So age is quite important. So we mentioned earlier that if, for example, you, you're roughly 10 years old, you actually start having that buildup of fat, but you're not going to have too many problems. You're not going to feel anything. But by the time you are 50, 60, 70, that's usually when you're going to have a complete blockage or almost complete blockage, especially if you have some of these other risk factors. And that's going to give you a higher likelihood of feeling the symptoms. Right, so it starts from early age, but it takes a long time to actually kick into effect. And you're going to have, you're going to start to feel those symptoms when you're a bit older, usually. Um, stress is also a huge factor. Stress is actually just as uh, big a factor as smoking is because stress just basically causes damage in your blood vessels and the damage will cause your blood buildup. And one more that I forgot, some people have genetic predispositions, so they have genes which make it more likely for them to have heart disease, this type of heart disease. Right, so these are some of the, the risk factors that are the causes of heart disease. Now I'm still going to talk about the treatment and management. So first I'm going to talk about the treatment and management, and I'm quickly also going to talk about prevention as well. So these are three things we can do if people already have heart disease. So this is when they have arthrosclerosis, these three things, to treat arthrosclerosis. First, there can be something called bypass surgery. And what bypass surgery is, is if you have, for example, coronary heart disease, which means that some of your arteries in your heart, let's say this one here, is affected, so it's blocked, what they can do, they can actually sometimes take a artery from your leg and they sort of put it, start here and, and make it bypass that blocked part. Right? So the artery they take from the leg, they make sure that it bypasses the blocked area so that blood can flow again. That's why it's called bypass surgery. And yeah, it's just a, they take a unaffected artery, for usually from your leg, and they bypass the affected area. Also, you can take the heart transplant route. In that case, you actually get a new heart. So obviously that would solve a problem, especially if, you, if your arthrosclerosis affects your heart, which in many cases it does. You can just get a new heart, and that means you're not going to have the blocked arteries. But obviously, heart plant transplants aren't that common yet. They'll probably be more common in the future, but they aren't that common yet. And also, we've got medications, more specifically, a medication called statins. And what these statins do is the statins aim to decrease the amount of blood cholesterol. Remember, blood cholesterol is what causes this plaque buildup. So if we decrease the amount of blood cholesterol, so this is what the statins do, they decrease blood cholesterol. If that happens, we also decrease our plaque in our arteries. So that's what we, people who have high, sort of further developed arthrosclerosis, they're often given this medication to help them remove their actual plaque in their, in their blood vessels. And also we're going to talk about prevention as well. So how we can actually prevent having it in the first place. So this other part was talking about treatment. So if we have it, how do we get rid of it? 
the other part talks about prevention. What can we do to make sure we don't have in the first place? Obviously, they have a healthy diet. That means we should not have so many of these saturated fat. So we should have low fat, but more specifically, low fat or no fat animal products, as opposed to low fat canola oil or low fat olive oil. That would make no sense because they're actually not that bad because they're, they're healthy fats. We make sure we limit the amount of bad fats we have. So healthy diet helps us prevent heart disease. Regular exercise as well, regular exercise. Obviously, quit smoking if you're smoking as well. We can't really do anything about aging. It's just going to happen. But reduce stress because stress gives us heart disease over time or makes it more likely. It's a risk factor. So these are three examples of what we can do to try to prevent having uh, developing heart disease or heart atherosclerosis. Healthy, having a healthy diet, limiting, limiting the amount of bad fat, doing regular exercise, and reducing stress. So I'll quickly cover this again. And again, you might choose a different named non-infectious disease, but I just covered heart disease or more specifically the different type of heart disease called atherosclerosis in this video, but you might choose a different one. But what you have to, whatever one you have to do, you have to know the name of it, in this case heart disease. You need to know about the occurrence. So for heart disease, um, it was number one cause of death in Australia. And it, roughly 47,000 people died of heart disease in 2004. And that equals to 36% of all deaths in Australia in that year. Um, cause risk factors, high saturated fat intake, smoking, lack of exercise, age. So the older we are, the more likely we, have, we are to have heart disease. And stress and genetic factors. These are some of the risk factors or the causes of, of arthrosclerosis. Symptoms, breathlessness, fatigue, pain, swelling, and the heart attack itself. These are symptoms of the end stage arthrosclerosis. Now, we won't have feel that at the beginning, but once it's already almost blocked, completely blocked, the treatment, we can have bypass surgery, which means we bypass the actual affected artery, usually in our heart. We can have heart transplant, which means we get a new heart. So that means all of these blocked arteries won't have be a problem. Or we can take medications such as, such as statins, which will lower our blood cholesterol, which means over time the plaque will hopefully reverse again. How can we prevent it? Well, having a healthy diet is quite useful, Having doing regular exercise, and reducing your stress as well. But uh, what you should know, you should know your occurrence, symptoms, cause, risk factors, and treatment management for your named infectious disease. In this case, heart disease, but you can choose a different one as well if you want to. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.